Let's all stand and turn to 71. 71. say good evening. Good evening. Amen. Wonderful song, isn't it? Amen. Amen. And just uh, praise the Lord. Good to see you this evening in the Lord's house and trusting the Lord's going to help us. I'm uh, thinking and uh, some thoughts on my mind about the sermon tonight and I trust the Lord will use it. But uh, this sermon is, has uh, been special for me trying to study it. It made me think about uh, once I heard Dr. Lee Robinson said he'd preach a sermon and the lady came to him after the service and said, uh, was you preaching that to us or to yourself? <laughs> so the sermon, it sure helped my heart. I, I hope it will yours. And we look into the Word of God. We'll uh, take prayer requests and go to the Lord in prayer. Let's remember our service, our sunrise service, and then our services on Sunday morning. And uh, looking forward, Easter Sunday, what a great uh, Sunday that is, Easter Sunday, and that the Lord is touching a special way. I'm glad He's living, aren't you? And uh, so we'll, we'll look at that uh, Sunday morning and be praying, looking forward to that. 
And maybe there's other requests, something to mention for prayer. Amen. Appreciate the prayer. We're looking in the book of Psalms, chapter 109. And we'll look at uh, some verses there. And then look at a verse in the book of Isaiah, chapter, uh, chapter 41. Book of Psalms, chapter 109. We're looking in verse uh, 21 through verse 27. And uh, trust the Lord to help. I'm thinking tonight about uh, a little outline is hand, help, humble in heaven. And I got to thinking my first uh, two points was a hand in help. And thinking about the hand of the Lord and the Lord helping. Uh, a lot of things said in the Bible about the hand and particularly the hand of the Lord. And a helping hand. I was thinking and uh, trying to study this, and most of you probably, from, I was thinking about the, how familiar those terms are. Uh, you know, we've heard that, and uh, I have all my life growing up. You might ask someone, could you give me a helping hand? Anybody ever heard that size me, I guess? And, you know, sometimes an employer, uh, maybe. If somebody had called for a recommendation for an individual, and I've heard this expression a lot, and they would say, I believe that he'll make you a good hand, and he's going to be a good employee, and the hand with it. I've asked people, uh, and I've said that a lot of times myself, could you just give me a hand here? <laughs> and uh, sometimes we need another hand that hold, we can't hold it all ourselves. And the helping hand. And... Uh, I'm glad that we've got the greatest help in hand uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ and our Lord and Savior. In the book of uh, Psalm, chapter 109, verse 21, and it said, But, uh, but do thou for me, o, o God the Lord, for thy name's sake, because thy mercy is good, and deliver thou me. For I am poor and needy, and my heart is wounded within me. I'm gone like a shadow when it decline up. I'm tossed up and down as the locust. My knees are weak through fasting, and my fe flesh fell off for fatness. I became also a reproach unto them, and when they looked upon me, they shake their heads. Help me, O Lord my God, O save me according to thy mercy, that they may know that this is thy hand, that thou, Lord, hast done it. Verse 27, that they may know that this is thy hand, that thy Lord has done it. Our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for salvation through the Lord Jesus. Thank you for the Word of God and Lord for our time together here on this Wednesday evening. A request been made mention tonight and then many of them that's on our heart are upcoming services. Lord, we pray you'd help us on Easter Sunday, the celebration of a risen Savior. May it be worthy of thy name and of thy glory and of thy honor. I pray tonight, Lord, may you bring to mind and heart the things you'd be pleased with and go forth uh, the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. And we'll thank you, Lord, for helping me already in the study and spoke to my heart. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. The book of Isaiah, chapter 41. We'll look at... Uh, one verse there in the book of Isaiah, chapter 41. One of our memory verses is verse 10 of this chapter. And he said, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And then in verse 13 of this chapter, he said, For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Isn't that a blessing tonight? I am the Lord thy God. I will hold thy right hand. And you know, that's wonderful, isn't it? That uh, and sometimes our, our children and our grandchildren uh, will hold on to their hand, you know, so they ain't letting you loose. And uh, we do that for their safety and protection. I was thinking in studying this, we had... When Isaac was little, just a little fella, uh, Beverly and I, grandparents, you know, I don't know, uh, grandparents, they're, they're, they're something else. 
because I'm one of them. But you know, we had that little fellow so scared, you know. Uh, I remember one time we was in the grocery store and we'd, uh, uh, I mentioned about the Apple Festival, Beverly instructed me one, one Apple Festival, just Lydia and myself went. And she said, now you take care of her. You know, that's a big crowd, you know, and people everywhere. And you don't, you keep your eye on her and you take care of her. And so I got back home. I'm telling Beverly about how I took care of her. You know, me and Lydia made it back safe. And so I'm telling all that. And Lydia spoke up and said, I think it's the other way around. So, you know, she's old enough. She's taking care of Papa at the Apple Fest. But Isaac, when he was little, was in the grocery store one time. And he said this to me and he said, Papa, you're not looking at me. <laughs> I must have been looking at something on the shelf and I'd turn my eyes away from him. We'd done had him. Uh, well, he wasn't taking no chances himself. He said, Papa, you're not looking at me. And uh, there's a good spiritual thought in that. I'm glad the Lord's looking at us, aren't you? And uh, praise God, his eyes on us, isn't it? In the book of Isaiah 41, verse 13, for I'm the Lord. God, I'll hold your right hand and uh, saying unto thee, fear not, I will help thee. So I got to thinking about hand and help and the help from the Lord. And I'll just look at some things that bless my heart. In the book of Psalms 109, the psalmist, and I was thinking about that, he was saying, and it, our verses we read described some of the situation he was in. Uh, he was fasting at that time. And uh, he was weak from that. He was talking about uh, the, the psalmist uh, dealt in the book of Psalms a whole lot with his enemies and those that were oppressing him. And he would call out on the Lord to help him. And then in the verse 27, he had asked the Lord to help. And your hand be with me and that they might know that it is the Lord. You know, I got to thinking about that. What a blessing that is. And I'd like things in my life. I'm sure that we'd all desire that that God would move, God's hand would move, and it would so be that we could say to God be the glory and that others could see that it was God. That was what the psalmist was desiring. He wanted other people around to know that, that God was fighting the battle, his battles for him. And I thought about Exodus chapter 14, verse 14. Give us that verse, Petey. And uh, the Bible says, the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Now, that's a verse, isn't it? Uh, you know, sometimes it's hard to hold our peace, but it's a lot better to hold your peace and let the Lord fight than to do it yourself. And then the Lord gets the glory, and it's Him, as the psalmist said, I want you to help me, and I want it to be known that the Lord did it. The Lord did it. You know, that's a blessing in life with things that come about, and we can stand back and say, and others could look to, as well and say there's, there's no other way that it would have worked out except God had a hand in it. So I'm thinking tonight about the hand of the Lord. In the book of Nehemiah, uh, I'm still thinking on the hand. I want to mention three things about the hand. But in the book of Nehemiah, and I've read that and thought about that a lot, whenever he you know, heard about the Jerusalem and the walls tore down the city burnt and it was laying in rubbish, and Nehemiah, the Bible said that he wept and mourned and fasted certain days. It so overcome him and such a burden on his heart. Then he went to the king. And we see God's hand, providence working out. The king, you know, he agreed to him going and even giving him materials and giving him protection on the way. And all that God did in, in, through the king and for Nehemiah. But when he gets there, uh, Nehemiah is going to need somebody to help him. And there's a, there's a verse there that stands out that's very significant. Nehemiah said, uh, whenever I told them, he had a group of people and he began to enlist help. And this was the thing that he told them that convinced them to, to help him, to pitch in with him, I guess you might say. He said, whenever I told them of the good hand of the Lord that's, that was upon me, that God's hands in this, in that same verse, the people he was talking to, they said, let us arise and build. Praise God, we're ready to go. That was the motivation, God's hand on it. And that should be our motivation. You get God's hand on it, uh, you're going to have some things happen. 
and it's going to be good, I'll say that. And we can see the, the rebuilding of the walls there. Uh, nobody could deny but what God's hand was throughout that situation. Well, in 52 days, he built the wall, and they had all kind of opposition. Sandballot was determined they'd never build the wall, and uh, they were there making fun of them and all kind of things, and even took up arms against them. And they said at one point, said, you little few and feeble Jews, do you think you could raise a wall? I preached a message one time on the few and the feeble, <laughs> and I put myself in there. But the few and the feeble can do a whole lot when the hand of God gets in it. That's the encouraging thing tonight. That's the encouraging thing to my heart. And I might say this, that sometimes God specializes in using the few and the feeble. If the few and the feeble's humble and trust in Him, we see our verse, um, one of our member verses, Psalm Isaiah 26, 4, says, Trust in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. The strength is in His arm, His hand. So then we see the three things under the hand tonight is number one, salvation. The book of Isaiah 59, verse 1, the Bible said that His hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, and neither is ear heavy, that he cannot hear. I mean, the hand of the Lord is not shortened. He can still save people. He can save to the other most. I'm glad he can. And he can reach further down than anybody could reach up and lift us from the mars of sin and thank God for that. So we see, number one, salvation. And then along with salvation, uh, in the book of uh, John 10, 28, 29, I want to look at those verses. And you're familiar with these, but it won't hurt just look at them and rejoice in my heart. And Jesus said, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. And neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. There's the hand of God again. Aren't you glad you're in His hand? In the book of Colossians, it said we're hid with God in Christ. Praise God. That's a good hiding place, ain't it? And then the next verse said, My Father which have given me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. So we see tonight the security. That's my second point, the first one, salvation. And then security, the security we have, praise God, we're in His hand. And uh, His strong, mighty hand. Isn't that the blessing? Isaiah 41, 10, I'll uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. And it mentions in the Bible different times about the right hand. And the right hand is significant of strength, the power of God, the right hand. In fact, Jesus is sitting tonight the Bible says that he went, after he had purged our sins by himself, book of Hebrews chapter 1, that he sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. That's where he's at, at the right hand. And the strength there tonight that he's giving you and I, everlasting strength. That's my next point is the strength. And I'm glad he gives the strength, aren't you? And, Paul, uh, and the psalmist said that about him, him, the situation he was in. And he was at the point that he could not do it himself. You know, if I'm understanding uh, salvation, number one, that a person never saved, our point in our Sunday school lesson was that we're all sinners and on our own we can do nothing about it. And a person never gets saved until they realize they can't do it themselves. And uh, I don't know in the Christian life if there's too much happening for you and I unless we get to where we let him do it and we can't do it ourselves. And so we see that uh, in the book of First Peter talking about humbling yourself of the mighty hand of God. Now we see number number two, my little next point, is help, is help. I'm glad there's help, aren't you? And the Lord said in Psalms, or Isaiah 41, 10, yea, I will help thee. I'm going to help you. Boy, that's the greatest help I've ever been, isn't it? I've always appreciated, and I appreciate to now, and I guess maybe some call on others more than uh, somebody else might, somebody to help you, and maybe you go on with life pretty much and don't need no help. But, yeah, you know, I was thinking about that. I don't know what that'd be a miserable place to be if you didn't need nobody. You know, it's wonderful to call on somebody to help you, ain't it? And say, I, I want you to help me. And they said, if there's any way I could do it, I'll be glad to help you. Helping people. The Lord said, I'm going to help you. In, uh, in our time of need, book of uh, Hebrews 4 and 16, we can come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help when in the time of need. He said, I'm going to help you. 
I'm going to help you. And then in Hebrews chapter 13, he said uh, in a verse there, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. And then the next verse says this, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. That's my thought tonight about needing and our help. And then it said, I'll not fear. I'll not fear. In the book of Isaiah again, 41.10, our memory verse. And he said that I'll help you. Yeah, I'll help you. He said, be not afraid. I'm with you. Be not dismayed. I'm thy God. I'll strengthen thee. Yeah, I'll help you. Don't be afraid. And you know, I was thinking in life, there's a lot of things to be afraid of. And I'd think a person might be a little less than honest if they say they're not afraid at times. Sometimes we're fearful of a lot of things. Sometimes we're fearful of what the diagnosis might be. A lot of people feared that. And they fear that it might be the, the, the worst that could be. And sometimes the news is bad. You know, we, we're fearful of things. But the Lord said that. Fear not, I'm with you. I'm going to help you. There's a God in heaven, thank God, that's got all power. His right hand is strong tonight and He can uphold us and He's able to uphold us. And He said, I'm going to help you in the time of need. And fear not. It's not always easy just to trust the Lord. Is it? You know, in our memory verse, Psalm Isaiah 26, 4, trust in the Lord forever. Trust Him. How many times have we got distraught and just plumb... Uh, uh, I call it out of it. You can call it whatever you want to. And I've had some times like that. I remember working on the job one. It's been years ago, and I've had a lot of <laughs> distresses and stresses and a lot of other things. And as a friend of mine had come by that day and talked to me, he said for some time, I don't know how long. And so the next day or two, he called me and asked me about what he'd talked about. And I said, When was that? And he said, Just about a day or two days ago. And I said, I don't even remember you being here. <laughs> uh, now, some of y'all don't get sidetracked like that, but I've had some fearful times. I've had some stressful times. But in studying this, it encouraged my heart. The Lord said, I'm going to help you. And I, I don't want you to fear. Now, you can go, we can read them verses. You know, that's just like coming to the altar sometimes. You know, we say, take our burdens to the Lord and leave them there. I've been to the altar before and prayed. And I don't know what I took more back with me than I took up there. And you know, it's easy for me to get up here and say that, but this encouraged my heart in thinking of the situation and things of life. The Lord said, now I'm going to help you. And you're going to need to trust me. And you're going to need to believe in me. And maybe you're going to need to humble yourself. And maybe you're going to be like, you need to get in the position that the psalmist was. said, Lord, I want you to do it because... You're going to do it, and I'm going to give you the glory for it. And it's going to be you doing it. I'm just turning it over to you. I remember on one occasion, I so distraught, and a preacher friend of mine came by, and I was telling him what the circumstance was. And he said, Brother Roger said, uh, have you prayed about it? And he said, it's like this, said, if the Lord can't do nothing about it, it's a known fact that you can. I mean, if it's already out of the hands that God can't do nothing, it's a little foolish for us to think we could pick it up and do something about it. But I'm glad it's not beyond His control, aren't you? And, but, and not beyond His ability. Everlasting strength. That's a pretty good qualification, isn't it? And he, he can do that and give us that. So we see the help. I'm glad He'll help us. You know, I was thinking just in life, you know, people get in crisis situations. Sometimes, you know, I mean, a serious, very serious situation, maybe a, a accident or something, a pen in, whatever situation, maybe whatever we might be in, maybe an injury or uh, we, we hollering out for help. Uh, we want some help. You know, that's one of the things, you get some older, you have lifelines and other things where somebody can come to you help, need help. I'm thanking God tonight for His help. And uh, you say, how, how often do you need His help? Well, it's kind of like this. You know, I heard a fellow one time, he was saying, the Lord said, uh, 
everything. He said, one morning, he said, Lord, everything's all right. I've got everything under control and everything going smooth. But he said, uh, I'm fixing to get up. And said, I'm going to need a whole lot of help. <laughs> it might kind of be smooth and leather before you start doing anything, making any movements or making any decision. But we're going to need a whole lot of help as soon as our feet hit the floor, amen. And we're going to need some help for the feet to hit the floor. I've experienced that, and maybe you have too, where you couldn't, where you couldn't get up. I remember the first surgery I ever had, the first time I'd ever experienced that, where I could not get myself up. I had to have somebody to pull, get me out of the bed. And that's uh, when you first experience that, that's kind of a wake-up call. And of course, it's sad to say that many people living day by day in that situation where they have to have assistance of someone else. But I'm glad the Lord can help and comfort there too, aren't you? And the Lord can be with us. He is with us, amen. So help us. Then my fourth point is humble. And it says there in the book of Peter, and there's the hand again comes into view. I believe it's the fifth chapter, and he says there, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, under his hand. Well, I've already talked about how strong his hand is and the strength that he's got and how he can hold us in his hand. So it'd just be a uh, stand of reason that if a person wanted to use any wisdom at all, they'd be willing to humble themselves under that sweet, gracious, mighty hand. Amen. That can give grace to help in a time of need. It's a safe hand to humble yourself under and to expect help and, to, and receive help. And then my last thought tonight is Heaven. Heaven. Thank God tonight. I'm glad we're headed home. There's a verse in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and it says something, I don't know exactly, but it said, if we have hope in this life only, we have all men most measurable. Paul talked about in that chapter how he had fought with beasts at Ephesus. And he said, if I have done that in a life and death situation, and if, and if all there was, if it all ended here, and if there was no heaven to go to, then I'd be of all men most miserable. Why did I fight with beast of Ephesus if Christ be not risen? If I don't have a risen Savior, if he's not on the right hand of the fallen eye, and if I'm not headed to heaven. But thank God that brings joy and peace and, a, and an anticipation to our heart that we head to heaven. I was at the post office one day and had a friend of mine come by and uh, he just said this to me. And, you know, I don't know, maybe he thought that I needed to hear that. Sometimes you can look at people's expression and you know they need something. And I don't know if that's what he looked at or not, but he said to me, he said, Brother Roger said, just think about it. Maybe just a day's time that tomorrow everything is going to be all right. You say, when's that going to be? Praise God, when Jesus comes back and that could happen tomorrow and we can be sure that everything is going to be all right. Heaven, heaven. I was thinking about the song and, you know, uh, I wished at times that I could sing and then I've tried to sing sometimes and whenever I have, all the people that were listening to me wish that I could sing. So I'm a little reluctant to try that. But I thank God for all the talent we've got here. Amen. And, uh, but there's a song that's, that was written, and it said, When I Travel My Last Mile. And the verse says this, and it says, Someday, when I've traveled my last mile here, the call will be coming for me. And I'll enter the lifeboat that will be near to carry me over the sea. And the course said that he'll hold my hand as over death's river I go. Then safe I shall be in beautiful heaven, I know. He says in Isaiah 41, 13, that I will hold your right hand. Now, if we believe in that, and I'm believing that, then this song that course had it pretty right, didn't he? said, he'll hold to thy hand. And then the last stanza, I believe, and it's got another one, but the last one that I wrote down, said, I'm ready to go to that golden shore to live there 
while the ages roll. And I want to see Jesus and saints of Yo in heaven, the home of the soul. For the Lord will hold your right hand. He said he's going to hold to my hand as over death's river I go. Then safe I'll be in beautiful heaven. I know. He's going to hold my hand. Praise God. He's holding our hand down here. And he said, I will hold your right hand. Fear not, I'm with you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. You know, I've had, you've done the same, just situations in life. I remember on one occasion, it was on a Saturday, and, and uh, I don't know if two people here remember that, but the, the two of them are here tonight, that, and I had a situation there, and uh, they just surprised me, knocked on the door, and said, we're here to do what it was that I needed done. I didn't know this coming, but I sure glad they did. I said, praise God. Well, you said, what'd you do? I bet you got out of there and just grabbed and dug right in there with them, didn't you? No, I just went out there and said, thank God, praise God, hallelujah, let her rip. And that's what they did. And they got the whole project finished. To God be the glory. And they were even called, amen, and somebody helped. I want to help somebody, don't you? You used to have a fellow in my church and every day of his life, that I knew him and uh, he just had this thing in his mind that I want this day, the Lord helping me, I want to be a blessing to somebody. And he surely was a blessing. Each day I'll do a golden deed by helping those which are in need. Somebody wrote that song. That's a pretty good thing too, isn't it? The Lord's helping. And he wants to use us to be helpers, amen? But he's helping us. He's holding our hand. Let's stand for prayer tonight. And <clears throat> Maybe there's needs on our heart and things we're thinking about tonight. Our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I lift my hand toward heaven. And there's a lot of various and sundry needs among us and among the church family. And Lord, I'd say that I need your help and I'm thanking you that you're, that I can boldly say that the Lord is my helper. And Lord, I pray you'd help me. Many times I'm fearful and I fail and I fail to trust you. And you're saying to me, fear not. And you're telling me why not to fear is because you're going to help me. Because the Lord thy God is with you. I'm with you, you said. Be not dismayed, for I'm thy God. I'm upholding you with the right hand of my righteousness. And just as surely as the security that you've given in saving our soul, and, and we're safe in the hands of God, and we're safe in your hand, you've given us eternal life. But Lord, as we live this life here in this earth, we need, and I need to be reminded again and again that I just need to trust you. And you said, I'm going to help you. I'm going to be your helper. I am your helper. I'm going to give you strength. I want to thank you. Lord, time and again, we could count our many blessings and name them one by one. And we could recount over and over again time and time again when the Lord had come to our rescue and helped us. But then in my weakness and my failure, again, a situation arises and then I become fearful. After you've done help me over and over again, Lord, may you help me of little faith. Lord, may I trust you forever and just know you're going to help me. And one day, thank God, your hand's going to Lead me over to the other side. You hold into our right hand. Thank you. Thank you for helping us. A lot of needs that we bring before. And I'm glad we can do that. I request before you. And cast our cares upon you. And believe in knowing that you'll help us. And I pray for that help. How we need it in just so many areas. And people that are in desperate need of help in crisis situations. Lord, we want to pray and may we be prayerful 
May you do, do as you've taught us to bear you one another's burdens. Lord, help us to be concerned about that. Help him. Thank you for your help tonight. Even in the service, each situation, Lord, we pray again. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.